Welcome to Feeding the Fire. Today we're in River Grove, Illinois, where Chief Dewey promises us a lasagna with its own unique flavor that his guys absolutely love. Anything can happen when you step out of the kitchen and into the fire. You're watching Feeding the Fire. Hey, we're in River Grove, Illinois, and we're with Chief Dewey. Today he's gonna make a dish with two of my favorite things, Italian food and buffalo chicken wings. I love lasagna. Lasagna is like one of my favorites. Me it, too. You know, buffalo chicken lasagna, I figured what a match. So we tried it, played around with a couple a couple different uh, recipes, and you know, we took some out, put some stuff in, and the recipe we're gonna make today has been the final um, get go that seemed that everybody seems to like. I've actually made this recipe within an hour, hour and a half of coming back from a fire or an ambulance call. Where the day short, you can stop at the at the grocery store, buy a rotisserie chicken from the uh, their deli section, chop it up, buy everything, put it together, and within an hour, hour and a half, it's on the table. See this be an easy dish to make at home. So this is the basic buffalo sauce. I take uh, a cup of Tabasco as a base. We'll start using. Start with that. We'll add uh, about a teaspoon or a tablespoon of uh, um, paprika, a tablespoon of uh, cayenne pepper. That's what makes it hot. That's the heat. <laughs> then we throw a little bit of yin to the yang. We'll throw some brown sugar in there. A little, even it out a little. Yeah, it's about three tablespoons of brown sugar. And then we'll take three uh, sticks of butter melted and then we'll, we'll do the mix. Um, we add a little bit of salt to taste and we add a little bit of vinegar and uh, we'll mix that together and while we're, we're doing the rest of the prep work, we'll chop it, we'll let it uh, mesh a little bit so that it gets the, the flavors will soak through everything else. a little bit. Okay, so that's the basis of our, uh, our wing sauce. We're going to just let this sit and gel up and we'll go ahead and we'll start prepping up our chicken and uh, our celery. Okay, let's prep the chicken. Just a regular old rotisserie chicken you can get from the grocery store. All you gotta do is just cut it, shred it, the bone it, and you're done. Um, the thing that we do just because of the uh, the fat content is we definitely get rid of the, the skin. But there isn't a part of the chicken that we can't use. Except the bones. This is boneless chicken yes. lasagna. Boneless chicken lasagna. You don't want to choke on the bones. <laughs> this is probably the hardest the hardest thing to do for the whole recipe is just getting all the chicken and, and, and the bone in it. That, that, that's the biggest time consumer for this. So Dewey, where do you get your inspiration for a meal like this? You know, I, I, I love to cook. My dad was a fireman. He cooked. He taught me how to cook in the kitchen and it's just a passion that I have. If I think if I wasn't a fireman, I'd have my own restaurant. Because I just I love to spend time in the kitchen. How tight do you want to shred that chicken? You can up? you can make it as, 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 as much as you want. If you want a little bit of consistency, and it's all it's all about the texture. If you want, you know, a lot of chicken, if you want it to go a long way, you can shred it smaller and it just meshes more with the lasagna. If you wanna if you wanna feel the have a good taste of the chicken and get a lot of chicken. You can make it a lot. Uh, you can make it larger. You can taste the chicken throughout the, the recipe. So it's like it's one of these where you taste it, and some of the guys have said that you'll you'll taste the different things at different times when you're eating it. It'll hit your palate, and all of a sudden you'll taste the blue cheese. You'll taste um, the buffalo sauce. Um, it's 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 just a, it, for some odd reason this just really works well with the lasagna. Dude, that sounds great. I can't wait to eat. Four and a half pounds of ricotta for this size of um, the lasagna that we're going to make. But if you're making this for the family, you can use just a smaller tub, uh, probably about a two pound or a one pound. The extra ricotta ain't going to hurt it. Um, we'll throw that in, and then we're going to use blue cheese crumbles. This just this mixes and meshes with the with the ricotta real well, so you get the the the, the wings, and the blue cheese, and it'll melt in when you're cooking it. Yeah, I've had people say I hate blue cheese. They try this, they're like, wow, that didn't, that wasn't real bad. That was, you know, they could hardly taste the blue cheese, but it just enhanced. You know, uh, some archaeologists discovered the remnants of cheese in tombs in Egypt that's 4,000 years old. Wow. That's a feeding the fire fact. Wow. They try eating it? No. <laughs> you never know with archaeology. <laughs> then we're going to put in four eggs. It's just like regular lasagna. Regular lasagna. That's all we're doing. I'll give you the other one. Throw that in there. All right, the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to add, just to flavor this, just with your, like your regular lasagna, you're going to use Italian seasonings. We're going to go ahead and use uh, one of the one of the things I like is, is Emerald's Essence. 
because it's got all the flavors in there. It's got a little bit of heat to add to it. It's got paprika. It's got garlic. It's got you know. It's got a lot of the spices that, are, that you know that you'd add in. But it's one, one fell swoop. One. It's an easy. Again, you asked about cutting time. You know, instead of me having to open up six different spices, I can go to this. It's a it's a it's right. a catch all and it, it works great. Real quick and easy. Yeah, we're just gonna throw some just to just just to, just to change the color and to give it a little bit more flavor. You can kind of smell the heat in there. Yeah, it's got a little bit of heat, but not too bad. Here we go. <laughs> This better be good. I'm working hard for it. Sorry, brother. <laughs> Didn't mean to make you come work in River Grove today. <laughs> you know, blue cheese was uh, actually an accident. When they put blue cheese in caves to cure it, age it, yeah. they went in and found out it was moldy. They wanted to throw it out. One guy decided to taste it and tasted the rich flavors of the blue cheese and said it was really good. Must have been a fireman. <laughs> he was hungry. Yeah. All right. Well, that, that looks like it's prepped and ready to go. Okay. I think we're about time to we can assemble this, layer thing, this and get thing. It, we can layer this thing and get it into the oven. All right. All right. What I use for the lasagna to layer it is um, I take a baking sauce, an Italian baking sauce. Again, a time consumer. You can if you if you like if you have your own uh, Italian sauce that you use a. Um, like a marinara or something like that at the house, you can use that. Um, jar sauces, I like a baking sauce because it helps with, it's designed for baking lasagnas. Um, and what I do is I'll take two jars of the baking sauce and then I'll cut it with my uh, wing sauce. So that it's that, that tomatoey base, but it's got the bite of the buffalo. Yeah, so you get all those flavors mixing together in the meal. Lasagna and buffalo wings, excellent. And what happens is you notice that the buffalo wing sauce was a little bit thicker. Yes. And then what will happen is with the, the baking sauce and the Italian sauce is it cuts it down so that it's easier to use in the, in the sauce. It'll, it'll make it go a little bit longer. All right, let's start building layers. Okay. Um, what I usually do is I throw a base of sauce down in the bottom just to prevent it from burning and sticking to the base, the, the, the bottom of your pan. Yeah, and it's easier for the guy that cleans up. It won't stick to the pan. That's it. All right, what I found, time saver for firemen, I don't have time to sit here and boil noodles, and that's what we were saying. Lasagna is an all-day affair sometimes, or people think. Um, there's a great product out on the market. They're no-boil lasagna noodles. You know what I call these? No extra work noodles. <laughs> yeah, this is a no-fuss, no-muss. It works. It, you don't have to boil them, and that's the biggest part of lasagna people dread is having to boil the noodles, all day, yeah. throw them out, you know, throw them over, let them drain. So you know. you, you, no boiling, no fuss, no muss. You build your lasagna on it. They're hard. But by the time they come out, they're just as soft as if, if you boil them. Yeah, you know why that they're so thin and hard like that? The the other ordinary lasagna noodles are more dense than these. These are less dense, so it helps absorb the moisture when you're baking them in the lasagna. Nice. And they, and they, they taste, taste just, just as, as good. good. I don't think, you know, some people said they can't even tell that you didn't boil. <laughs> and what do you tell the guys at the firehouse? I slaved all day long on these noodles. <laughs> Basically, I'm putting them down. Um, I layer them on the bottom and put and just set to build the layers. You don't have to overlap them. You don't have to, because what will happen is this thing's just going to congeal on its own. Okay, now we're going to throw some uh, celery on the top. Okay. Just like you said, just rough and ready. Yep. We'll throw a layer of the chicken. More sauce. I'll start throwing some cheese in there. This looks like shredded Mexican cheese, like tacos. Yeah, three um, cheese mix. Three cheese things. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to build the layers up until, you know, probably about a quarter of the pan up because it's going to expand a little bit. It's going to bubble up a little bit. Um, and you can build it in two layers, three layers, four layers. It just depends on how much you want to build. If you want a real high lasagna like some people do, you can't. Even the so, noodles, they'll expand too because they'll suck up all the moisture. All that moisture. From, yeah, and it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go up. All right. And then it's just building layers again. We're going to do, do another layer. Okay. This is going to be a delicious meal. So these guys like when you cook or? I think I was once in my career I was actually transferred from one firehouse to another because my shifts gained too much weight. <laughs> well with a big old dish like this, how, how much do you think this dish weighs? Well, if you figure out, we already put four and a half pounds of cheese in there, of the brigada, and then uh, this is probably about 10 or 15 pounds of lasagna. Jeez. Easily. This is like, you know, you can make this for Super Bowls and World Series games. Like we said earlier, it's going to be great. Yeah, let's go ahead and pick it up. Let's see how heavy it is. Whew. Yeah, it's about 12 pounds. 
So now that we got it all assembled, do we? We just got to throw it in the oven. Throw in the oven for about uh, 45 minutes to an hour, hour and 15, depending. If something like this size, you may want to store it in the oven a little bit longer because it's a lot. You got a lot. A lot it's a mess. Yeah. So, um, but it's about 375 to 400, depending on what you're what you're doing. You want to brown the cheese on the top, and you want to let everything mesh. The uh, no boil noodles say you want a minimum of at least 45 minutes. Okay. So that it, it, it gives it the time to soak up. Yeah, and it'll soak up all that moisture. Yeah. So we'll get this in the oven and. We'll be ready to eat. All right, I can't wait to eat. Sometimes children, out of curiosity or just a fascination with fire, will start fires. Usually that's not a problem, but when children demonstrate a fascination to intentionally start fires all the time, that becomes a problem. Dewey started a program called Juvenile Fire Setters Program. What's this program all about? Basically what it is is we take kids after we realize they've set a fire, sit them down and there's an evaluation tool that we look at okay. to see exactly what happened and then we try to figure out why and we try to correct it. I understand that uh, over 55 percent of arson arrests or investigations involve kids under 18 years old. Yeah, it's it's sad. Part of the issue is, is some of the parents look at it as you know, oh, my kid's playing with matches, it's not a big deal. What are some of the warning signs parents could look for? Look around in the room, take a look at their toys. Do you notice scorch marks on their toys? Do you notice scorch, you know, like burn marks, unexplained burn marks around the house? Closets are usually good because the kids are trying to hide it because they don't want to get caught. Okay. Um, so you take a look at some of that. And it, it, literally, if, if you find that, you know, a child's playing with matches, it's not something that you just want to ignore. It's not going to go away. Um, the curiosity and the fascination is only going to grow. A lot of families, don't see it or they say oh he's just playing with matches do a lot of these crimes or the behavior of these fire setters go unreported because of that absolutely um, you know a good portion of kids that are fire setters it's all curiosity based do you know how big of a problem this is I mean not at least once a week do you hear you know a fire was caused by a children you know a child playing with matches or uh, you know you had a bedroom fire and you know they're looking at it as a possible you know ch children playing with uh, you know with a lighter or something like that so early intervention how effective is that for the early adults? intervention is 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 crucial some of these kids it's you know if it's a curiosity it's identifying the the curiosity um, it's getting these kids the educational tools so that they don't make the same mistakes twice. It's a crucial program out there. It's, it's something that I believe in that, you know, I don't want to see my fellow brothers and sisters in the fire service die because they're going to fight a fire. It could have been prevented. It could have been prevented. Yeah. You know, I would rather work ten times harder out in the prevention aspect, teaching families the right things than to have to go and tell some mom and dad that, you know, I'm sorry, we, co we couldn't save or we mm -hmm. couldn't get in to save your son or your daughter. Okay, Dewey, I think it's done. I think it is. Oh, that looks good. Oh, that is great. Even smells wonderful. Well, let's call the guys in. Let's do it. All right. Yeah, right? Like I said, it smells good, it just smells light. You think, guys, too is good cook? Yeah, absolutely. Darn good cook. Here, come. Can't lose that one, guys. Teamwork at its job. Wow, that lasagna was great with its unique flavor. And how about that work Dewey does with the juvenile fire starters? Here at Feeding the Fire, we support education like that. In fact, I made my own educational video called Becoming a Junior Firefighter with Fireman Jim, which is available on our website. Thanks again for watching Feeding the Fire, and we'll see you next time at a firehouse near you.